Hi, Jamie Linderman here at Cable Next Gen 2023 in Denver, Colorado. I'm here with Doug Blue from Nokia. Hi, Doug. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm good. So we've had lots of conversations over the last couple of days about Doxis, about fiber. Uh, we know that there are cable operators that are deciding to go with the multi-gigabit strategy over Doxis 4.0. Mm -hmm. um, do you think this is a viable strategy considering the competitive landscape? It's a it's a it's a tough question to answer, but I think that um, when you look at the market segment, uh, I actually break down the market into four different categories. Uh, I think usually uh, you have the megas, which are typically the large large operators, and they have a very solid strategy about 4.0, mainly because um, they have such a large embedded base, and they need to ha be able to hit uh, as many customers with the most cost-effective solution out there. But I think a lot of the tier two and tier one operators, the ones that are not nearly the, you know, the three, 30 million types of subscribers, they're under a much more competitive threat uh, to have overbuilders, uh, to have uh, new, uh, new telcos come in or telcos come in and overbuild them. So I think that uh, the smaller guys need to start thinking much more, not necessarily about Doxis 4.0, but how they can start introducing 10 gig PON or some other PON technology into their network. So we're talking about PON, different flavors of PON. Yep. Um, is there a particular strategy or flavor that, that operators could, cable operators can choose? Um, or are we seeing different, uh, different flavors used across the board? Well, I think it's an interesting time now because historically cable operators have always been going down the path of uh, 10 gig EPON. Um, but with the exception of the megas, uh, many are pivoting to an ITU-based uh, standard, which means XGS PON or 25 gig PON and, uh, and so forth. Um, so I, I think the flavor of PON, even though really both of them are functionally equivalent, uh, when we start looking at global volumes and where the industry is heading, uh, I think a lot of them are gonna be shifting to, to a more XGS GPON type world. So we, we've heard a lot of talk about DAA. We know there are solutions out there that can do both PON and DOCSIS. Yeah. Um, do you think this is a viable strategy for operators? Well, I, I think it goes back again to what I was saying about the megas versus the, right. the smaller tiers. Um, if you uh, are really committed to a DOCSIS 4.0 solution, I think having a hybrid node that can do DOCSIS and also um, PON makes a lot of sense. Um, but let's keep it in mind, I think that really the strategy is about DOCSIS. So they like having the ability to go pawn, but they're really not planning on going to very, very large quantities with the exception of maybe in green fields. So um, I, I think really uh, uh, having a purpose built uh, higher density type solution that for example, could go to 25 gig and beyond is probably a really good fit for, for other operators. So, so what is Nokia doing to help operators pivot to pawn? Well, first of all, um, we believe in uh, bandwidth. So uh, uh, with our Quillian-based solutions, which is our own chip that we manufacture from an OLT perspective, we're able to offer 25 gig uh, to operators uh, today. So uh, right now we have over 900,000 ports of OLT ports that are now capable of doing 25 gig. And uh, I think that that's gonna be a real differentiator uh, in the future. The other thing is we have purpose-built node-based OLTs that also can go 25 gig. So again, by being able to work into a cable ecosystem, uh, we're able to support as, they, as cable operators pivot from DOCSIS to PON. Lots of, lots of opportunity and solutions available. I think thank so. you, Yeah, thank you so much for your time. Sure, my pleasure.